The Redemption of Babel, a devotional for the season of Lent, produced by Northside Church. Monday, February 27th. Let us pray. Inward I turn for comfort and warmth, for protection from this ugly world. I stay in my sphere, sheltered and safe, keeping my precious balance. I know it well, this tower I've built, each stone crafted wisely. This life is mine, a story to write as I see fit, doing what I can to prosper. Here in my tower, comfortable and content, sometimes I sense a still, small voice. It calls to me. Is it you, Lord? Our scripture passage today comes from Genesis chapter 10, verses 8 through 12. Cush was the father of Nimrod, who became a mighty warrior on the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. That is why it is said, like Nimrod, a mighty hunter before the Lord. The first centers of his kingdom were Babylon, Uruk, Akkad, and Kalna in Shinar. From that land, he went to Assyria, where he built Nineveh, Rehoboth-ur, Kala, and Rezin, which is between Nineveh and Kala, which is the great city. Cain may have come up with the idea of building a city, but it found a home in the heart of all humanity. Even after the great flood wiped every city from the face of the earth, the idea could not be washed away. Why? Cain built the first city in response to the chaos unleashed in his life when, rather than overcoming sin, he was devoured by it and murdered his own brother. Finding himself banished, Cain built the city of Enoch to escape his curse of becoming a restless wanderer, but succeeded in only being further separated from God. Sin was continuing to consume him. Cain's city was much more than an escape, though. It was designed explicitly as a rejection not only of God's punishment and protection, but also as a symbol of Cain's rejection of God's design, and even God himself. The invention of the city was Cain's way of saying, I don't need God, and I'll deal with this life and all the chaos myself. And I have a suspicion that Cain designed this blueprint for himself because for him it was easier than simply acknowledging his behavior, confessing his failure, and repenting of his sin. I suspect this because it's probably what I would have done. In fact, it is what I do, and I bet it's what you do too. Of course, most of us don't build literal cities in response to the chaos our sin unleashes on our lives, but we do plan out and construct our own little ways of avoiding acknowledging our failures and confessing our sins, which ultimately amounts to telling God, I've got this, I don't need you. And so we remain restless wanderers in heart, mind, and soul, because building such cities are our best hope and design for huddling restless wanderers together in an attempt to take control and care of ourselves without help and without God. What's worse, we pass such projects on from generation to generation, building a city of control that can never be what it is designed to be, and that, in fact, only lays the foundation for further chaos in our lives. Within two generations of the flood, perhaps the greatest city builder of all time, Nimrod, became the first great warrior king on earth, setting up his kingdom in the land that would later be called Babylonia. He is credited with building at least eight cities, two of which would go on to play an incredibly destructive role in the history of God's people, Babylon and Nineveh. How long will we continue in the steps of Cain and Nimrod, teaching our children to do the same? When will we repent of this and confess that we are all restless wanderers, fully dependent on the God who created us for so much more.